Alright guys, no one wants to hear my voice, so I'm just gonna get right into it. This is an awesome uh, trailer that I found. So, enjoy the video. Peace. So Elder Scrolls Online is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. It's the first time that you're able to play an Elder Scrolls game uh, with your friends. So if you played Oblivion or Skyrim in the past, uh, now with Elder Scrolls Online you can play with your friends. When we started uh, developing Elder Scrolls Online, one of the things we did was we had two columns and we kind of wrote down like, okay, here's what uh, we like as an Elder Scrolls game and here's what we like in MMOs. For instance, we want to make, you know, combat more like Skyrim, so we want to make it more involved, you know, active blocking, active, uh, you know, sword swing or, you know, firing off uh, spells. So that was really important to us is getting, you know, just, just the right amount of those features together to create, you know, its own unique experience in a fun game. One of the tough calls in creating Elder Scrolls Online um, was looking at um, how do you make the world balanced for you know so many players that are online at the same time because you know in a single player game it's a slightly different balancing problem um, and so we had to make sure that the game had levels and that we couldn't just allow you to explore everywhere because that would mean there was you know very little progression in the game and we wanted to have progression be something you really felt uh, but we wanted to have just enough space to where you still felt like you could explore regardless of your level so that was probably one of the hardest things we had to overcome was getting that uh, feeling of progression in the game while still allowing players to explore a lot of space. For me, Elder Scrolls Action uh, starts off with we want to immerse you in the world. So when you play Elder Scrolls Online, probably one of the first things you're going to see is that we don't have a lot of, you know, UI in the screen, you know, that, that kind of just disappears until you get into combat and then we have you know a short strip of a, a, a shortcut bar but it's not really about playing your shortcut bar that's just an easy way for you to pick your spells and fire them off while still being able to you know swing your sword or use your staff and again one of the other things that's important about combat is if you're looking in the world and you don't have a lot of uh, interface elements up, you can tell what monsters are doing. So we can make our monsters give you tells and you know you can really see what they're doing. So for instance, if a monster is charging up an attack, you know that that's time to block. And all of that kind of combines into making it really feel very action-oriented and reactive. When we started out um, kind of looking at how we wanted to do quests, one of the things we didn't want to do is we didn't want to put people on rails. We didn't want to have you, you know, just go quest after quest after quest after quest. We wanted to make sure that you could explore, you know, as I mentioned before. If you're on a quest, for instance, and you see this other point of interest, like say it's a cave entrance or it's a dungeon entrance, maybe you're just like, oh, I'm going to go over there and explore instead of doing what I'm doing with this quest. The whole idea is to engage the player in exploration, but still give them context for what's going on in the world. So quests kind of provide the context, and then these points of interest kind of provide provide the exploration opportunities. You might find things like chests, you might things, find things to do like go fishing. The whole idea is to encourage this exploration amongst our players. When you think about what makes you feel special in real life, it's, it's your interactions with people, it's, it's the way you change the world. And so we use lots of different tricks on changing the world. So uh, for instance, if I make a choice uh, that's different from my friend, you know, Ted's choice or something of that nature, then my friend, um, you know, might have experienced something different with this NPC than I experienced with this NPC. That NPC might treat me different. You know, that's a very small thing uh, that kind of starts going uh, to where you see and you feel special. But to kind of blend lots of larger elements like how the world looks, um, is one of the things that we change. We change what you're seeing in the world. Um, we change the, whether you see certain NPCs or how certain NPCs look. And all of those things kind of combine to make sure that your choices, your decisions in the world are really seen by you. But it's not just that. So there's other things like we have a main quest. And your main quest is something that you do solo. Um, and in the world you have Moloch Ball who steals your soul. So you kind of have to go get that back on your own. Now there are NPC companions that go with you when you're doing this, but that really makes you feel special to kind of get that you know, special treatment. It's, a, it's almost a single player experience, if you will, uh, going through that main quest. So we try to make sure that um, our instancing for players is something we really handle smartly. Um, what that means is that 
we don't want to separate our player base too much, but for the main quest, that is something that's uh, instance out so we can uh, change the world in ways that make you feel special. Um, but we also have uh, what we internally call layering uh, that allows you on the outside world to see different uh, outcomes to different quests and different choices that way. Um, we also have dungeons. Um, we have instance dungeons that you can go into with like groups of four. Um, and we'll have uh, our ABA, which is all of this uh, part where Oblivion took place called Cyrodiil. And in Cyrodiil, um, uh, that's the alliance war taking place, that's PvP taking place, and so that's a huge battle that's ongoing, that's just, you know, thousands of players in that area all at once, uh, fighting for control of keeps um, and trying to get Elder Scrolls. So once you reach level 50 in what we call, you know, PvE or player versus environment uh, versus PvP, um, you actually can go and play a different alliance. Um, with that same character. So then from there, it's uh, it's all still level 50, but it starts to get harder and harder and harder. And then as you finish that second alliance, you go on to a third alliance. And that third alliance is even harder. Um, for large group PvE, we have what we're calling Adventure Zones. And we haven't really revealed a lot of the details on Adventure Zones yet, uh, but we definitely want to make sure that there's something there for those larger groups to do. For smaller groups, like say a group of four, we have what we call Master Dungeons. So after you've completed uh, a dungeon run the first time with your friends, uh, once you get to level 50, you're able to do part two of, of certain dungeons, uh, which is really cool because it's, a, it's like a continuation of that story. It opens up new places in that dungeon, uh, and that's really fun. And then, of course, there's the Alliance War that I mentioned earlier. When we start out in the game, we have three alliances. So we have the Daggerfall Covenant Alliance, which is um, Bretons, Red Garden Orcs. We have the uh, Aldmeri Dominion, which is um, the uh, High Elves or the Altmer, the Bosmer, and the Khajiit. And then we have the uh, Ebonheart Pact. And the Ebonheart Pact has the Dark Elves or the Dunmer. Um, it also has Argonians and it has the Nords. Um, you know, and if you played Skyrim, you're probably pretty familiar with uh, the Nords. So those three alliances are vying for control of uh, the Emperor because the Empire uh, has fallen during our time period. And so that's what kind of sets up the war element that's taking place in Cyrodiil, is those three alliances fighting for control of the Empire and fighting for who's going to be Emperor. And a player can actually be crowned Emperor. You know, I think one of the things that will really make us stand out um, is the level of immersion and the level of exploration you'll get. Um, I also think, you know, I'm super excited about the Alliance War uh, because uh, I, I really like PvP. Um, and I think that taking uh, sieges, or sorry, rather sieging keeps is huge. Um, it's, it's one of those fun things to do because you have like, you know, catapults firing, you have trebuchets going off, and you have a lot of people who are, you know, all in the same place. And we support um, 200 players on screen at the same time. And so that's something that's huge. I mean, you get to see these huge battles taking place for these keeps, and that's terrific. Um, and, you know, that, those battles aren't just, you know, something that just affects like a little uh, area. It, it can actually affect uh, globally uh, anybody who's a member of your alliance and a member of that campaign. So uh, I'm pretty excited about our alliance war. I think that's going to be a standout feature for us. Yeah. One of the things is our game right now is in closed beta. Um, so if you haven't already, you should go sign up for our beta. And for those people who have signed up for beta, uh, we've had a tremendous response. So, you know, please bear with us. We are doing it in stages and hopefully we'll get to you and get you in the beta. Uh, so the game right now is uh, scheduled for release for uh, PC and uh, Mac.